All right, this video is about how to evaluate inverse trig functions. All right, so basic terms and definitions. If you recall, a while back we talked about what's called the horizontal line test, and it determines if a function even has an inverse, okay? You remember back in the day, the vertical line test told you, is it a function? The horizontal line test tells you, does it have an inverse? If it crosses only one place, it will have an inverse. If it crosses more than one place, there is no inverse. All right, so keeping that in mind, we're going to figure out where our sine, cosine, and tangent graphs have inverses, okay? But we're going to refer to this horizontal line test. That's why I wanted to remind you what it was. Now, notation-wise, when we find the inverse of a function, all right, for the sine, the inverse could be called the arc sine or sine with the negative one. Cosine, it's called the co arc cosine or cosine negative one. Either notation means the same thing as inverse, okay? Tangent, arc tangent, or tangent to the negative one power. You will see it written both ways, but they mean the same thing. All right, so let's look at this. Let's talk about the inverses of these graphs. Um, for arc sine, all right, so what I need to do here is look at the parent function of sine and decide what segment of this graph will pass the horizontal line test. Obviously, if I throw a line through the whole thing, it's going to cross through these things and there's no inverse. I want to find a portion of this graph that will pass the horizontal line test. So what I'm looking at here is um, from here to about here, it's going to pass that horizontal line test. So if I could just snip at this little portion of my graph out, it would pass the horizontal line test. After that fact, on this direction or this direction, it will fail. So only this section of the sine graph has an inverse. I hope that makes sense. Only this part will pass the horizontal line test. So I am restricted by these values, all right? So on the sine curve, I'm restricted by the domain here would be negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Okay, only there will it work for the domain. The range still is... Uh, negative 1 to 1. That has not changed. All right. Now, remember with inverses, domain and range flip places. So the domain of my arc sign is, I'm sorry, negative 1 to 1, and the range is negative pi over 2, pi over 2. Okay, if, that, if you don't remember that, remember the, the days we did the xy tables and the inverses had to match? The x and the y's would switch places. That, that's what created the inverse. So what we're doing is we're switching x, your domain, and your range for the inverses. I hope that makes some sense. Arc cosine. Now this, this limitation is super important, and we'll get to it in a minute. Arc cosine, we're going to look at the same thing. What portion of this graph would pass the horizontal line test? Okay, only what portion? So if I look at this, um, it, it starts to repeat itself, right? It's not going to pass there. So from, um, from pi, if I stop here, from here to here, it would work. Okay, you can take any segment you want, but I want to try to get as close to the origin as I can. Here to here, it's going to work. So that's from 0 to pi. Okay, so the domain there would be 0 to pi. And the range on that would be negative 1 to 1. All right. So for the inverse, remember they're going to flip places. So my range is negative one to one, and the I'm sorry, the range becomes the domain. The range is what my domain used to be. So now it's zero and pi. And we'll work more with this in the graph tomorrow. But right now I want to just get these restrictions written for you and see, make sure you know where they're coming from. Tangent. All right. To pass the the horizontal line test. You really just take one period of it, right? This would pass, but if you start repeating, it's not going to pass the horizontal line test. So if I just go from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, that's the domain. That's where that inverse will exist. The range is negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, so my inverse domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, right? It's the opposite of what my range is. The inverse range is then limited to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. All right? And we use parentheses because, remember, it's really undefined at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So 
Hope that makes a little sense. This is where we're getting our restrictions on our inverse graphs. What portion of the parent function would pass the horizontal line test? So let's move it on. All right, so, so here's the restrictions up here. I want to just talk about it again. Arc sine, we said the range could only go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So what this means is that oh, your answers for an arc sine question can only come from, where's negative pi over 2? It's down here. Positive pi over 2 is right here. So it's either going to come from quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. So you're going to draw these circles on each of your problems. It will help you immensely. All right, so that's the arc sine circle you're going to be drawing. Arc cosine goes from 0 to pi. Well, 0 and pi, right? So it's just going to make this portion of my circle. So all the angles right here that fit in there are game for my answer choices. Arc tangent goes from negative pi over 2, which is down here, to positive pi over 2, which is up here. And it, again, can only come from quadrants 1 and 4. So arc sine and arc tangent are the same, right, restriction-wise? All right, so how do you solve these problems? Okay, spread these out a little bit. Arc cosine, all right, square root of pi over 2. I'm sorry. Arc cosine, square root of 2 over 2. So what this is saying is you're looking to evaluate. So it's what angle has this ratio, basically, is the question that's being answered, okay? What angle has this ratio within its limitations? So arc cosine, all right, let's revisit. Arc cosine, my limitations have to come from quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, all right? So I'm looking for an angle on the unit circle that has a cosine of square root of 2 over 2. So if you look at your unit circles, you will find that at pi over 4, the cosine is square root of 2 over 2. Now you might say, well, what about this one at 3 pi over 4? Well, that one is a negative square root of 2 over 2. I need the positive one, so my answer then is that angle, pi over 4. It is an angle. Example 2, arc cosine of square root of 3 over 2. All right, begin with your circle and its limitations. Remember with sine, it goes from quadrant 1 to quadrant 4. So this portion of my graph is where I can choose from. And I'm looking for an angle with a sine of square root of 3 over 2. Well, that's positive sine, so that means my y values are positive, which means only in quadrant 1. So I look for the angle in quadrant 1 that has a y value of square root of 3 over 2. That would be up here at pi over 3. So my answer is pi over 3. Yes, you're going to use your unit circles quite a bit with this. Tangent, or arc tangent of 1, for example, 3. Arc tangent of 1. All right, so look again at your limitations for tangent. They go from quadrant 1 to quadrant 4. And where's the tangent 1? So tangent, you need to remember, is always the y divided by the x. So if it's a 1, that means my y and my x are the same exact value. It's positive 1, so they have the same sign. So look at the angles in quadrant 1 and 4. See which ones have the same exact value, same exact sign. The only one you're going to find is pi over 4. So again, my, my answer is pi over 4 for this one. All right, um, number 5 here, cosine inverse. Well, all right, cosine inverse of negative 1. Cosine, remember, has the limitations of... 0 to pi, so within these sections. Cosine, recall, is, is an x value, so this is saying what angle within this region has an x value of negative 1. Where is it negative 1? Over here, right here at pi. So pi is my answer. Tangent inverse of negative 1, all right? Tangent, draw your circle. Where can you do tangent? Well, tangent comes only from quadrant 1 and 4. Where is it negative 1? Well, y over x is tangent, right? Well, in these quadrants, you either have them positive and po x is positive, y is positive, which would give me a positive tangent. So I know it can't come from quadrant 1. That means it has to come from quadrant 4. So what angle in here is going to give me a tangent of negative 1? Well, it's this angle down here at 7 pi over 4. Because that's going to give you square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2, which is negative 1. Now, the thing is, we're not going to use these angles as they are called in quadrant 4. You're going to reflect them. So remember the hamburger fold. If you reflect that up, 
it folds right on top of pi over 4, but we want the negative version of that. So we're going to call it negative pi over 4 because we had to reflect it. Okay, so you're not going to use the angle name of 7 pi over 4 because that doesn't really fit within our range. So we call it by a different name. We call it by its reflected name, which would be negative pi over 4. Arc sine. All right, draw your circle. Arc sine's limitations come from pi, uh, quadrant 1 to quadrant 4. All right, arc sine, remember, is y. So this is saying I have a negative y value. Well, which quadrant has a negative y value? Only quadrant 4. So quadrant 3 answers are not usable. So in quadrant 4, what angle has a sine of negative 1 half? Well, this angle right here is square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. That angle, we call it 11 pi over 6, right? But if you reflect it, which we need to reflect it, you give it by its new name, if you reflect it up, it becomes negative pi over 6. Remember, hamburger fold it. Use that name in, from quadrant one, just slap on a negative sign. All right, compositions of these. All right, don't get overwhelmed. Um, arc cosine, I want the tangent of the arc cosine of two over three. Now, remember, cosine is the same as x over r, if you remember that. So think of these values as x over r. That means my x is positive and my r is always positive. So with arc cosine, remember cosine can only come from 1 and 2. So when I draw this, I know it has, since my x's are positive, it has to come from quadrant 1, which means my triangle is going to come here. So you're going to go back to drawing these triangles that we've done before. So there's theta. So x is 2, r is 3. So now I'm going to use good old Pythagorean theorem to find the y value. So 3 squared minus 2 squared is 9 minus 4, which is 5. So it means this side right here is the square root of 5. So then I need to find the tangent of this. Well, tangent's opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of that angle then is square root of 5 over 2. And I don't have to rationalize it because there's no radical in the denominator. So it's kind of like going back to stuff we've already done. But you have to keep it within the correct quadrants. Example 8 arc sine of negative 3 over 5. Well, sine is y over r. And this is a negative, so it has to be in one of the two negative y quadrants. But remember sine, the restrictions on sine come from quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So which one has a negative y? Well, the y's are positive here. This one has a negative y. So that means my reference triangle comes right here. The y is negative 3, the r is 5. So I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem again. 5 squared minus negative 3 squared. 25 minus 9 gives me 16. That means my missing side is a 4. Theta is always from the origin. And I'm looking for cosine. So I need the cosine of theta. Cosine is always adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 4 over 5. Hope this makes some sense. Come with questions if you have them. I want you to try this one for the width. I want you to find the exact value of the sine of the arc cosine of negative 2 over 3.